I'm Josh. I I worked at the Weber Institute for three years till what was it, 2021, I think. Uh, no, 2022. And then I I moved to Abbey, and actually, like two weeks ago, I took a, a job at this company, uh, Bridge. I, I work in mostly computational biology of all kinds now. I'll be working on cancer for the next year. Um, so let's get started. Uh, at Abbey, they built this internal package where we housed all our visualization stuff, and I thought you guys would like it. It was kind of the coolest thing I learned while I was there. Um, so I made I decided to do this art club. Uh, to get started, we do need, let me screen share here. And the first thing I'll need you to do is run this setup.r here. Uh, I've linked the repo in the chat and the R channel. Um, and what this will do is uh, really just install the R packages we need on the back end. Um, so to give you an idea here of what we're building towards, uh, this is the output of a differential expression that we're going to look at. It's interactive. Uh, we can do single feature plots. Uh, it, will, it might be because my R session expired. It's running on the back end. But yeah, you get the idea here. Um, and we can switch between differential expressions, uh, analysis to kind of visualize that and scroll through the gene outputs. Um, I think it makes a really nice uh, kind of database, if you will. It's not a database, but it where biologists can scroll through and don't have to bother the computational biologists to get what they need. All right, so I'll give an overview of the study we're gonna look at. Um, so here in this folder that we're gonna be working at, working out of, uh, we have, where's that? That was the wrong one to click, uh, analyze markdown. Okay, we have a mouse study with three groups, uh, basal cell, luminal cell at progenitors, and mature luminal. Um, uh, these are from female virgin mice. Uh, the key here is that we have three groups that we can contrast against. And these outputs are the outputs of the WEMA uh, differential expression. So many of you are familiar with that. Um, I'll show you what it looks like, but it's really these three files are just the top table saved of the differential expression. Then uh, some of you are familiar with you can do enrichment analysis on the differential expression uh, results. And these are saved matrix from different or enrichment analysis. The rest of it is just really metadata. And that's really as much context as I think you need for us to get started. So I'm gonna pull up my R programming now. You can see the app is still running in the environment. And I'm gonna go ahead and clear my environment. Is anyone still installing packages? Cause I, I can wait if. Um, a, few, a, few, a few people here don't have laptops and I'm using mine to screen share, so. Okay. Then, then I guess we could just watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so most of what we're going to be doing, honestly, uh, is visualization. So uh, if you're familiar with ggplot and Plotly, I feel like a lot of this is going to be very familiar to you. Uh, so we'll go ahead and library our packages. And really, was probably not familiar with to you is this omics navigator package. Um, I feel like the key to this package is really just understanding the nature of this one giant object we're going to make that's just nested upon nested data. And so we start, if you can see here, we need to create a study object. And so within that package, you have a helper function that creates your study. Now, what is a study? For you guys, in this case, it would be like brain seek phase one, brain seek phase two. That's what would be going into this. And so if we can look at the structure, 
And so it has all these attributes that we're going to have to fill in as we go through this. Um, and the important part is it's a uh, relational kind of database. So this, how do I say? The, the pairing is the, the first column of the features has to be common across everything that we label in here. So then we're gonna load in or name our models for now. And for each one of these, where there's a name here, there's usually a function. So you, if it says models, there's a function to say add models within the omics navigator package. So here, what we're doing is we're just creating uh, a list and this could happen to, uh, it's modular for this. So you could do like a tax seek, uh, chromatin digestion of the mice. We don't have this data, but just as an example, uh, because it is capable of doing multi-omic analysis. In this case, we only have one. So we're looking at differential expression and you give a brief summary of this. And then we add that on, we can look back at our study and we see under models, we've added our, our one differential expression. The important thing is, again, it's relational. So when you're referring back, this name has to stay the same. So all the differential expression you do under this has to be uh, spelled that way with an underscore. All right, we're reading in our samples now. Let's take a look at what our samples are. Um, so very similar, uh, you can imagine, to, to some of the quality uh, control metrics you guys probably work with. Uh, we have a group here, which is really cell type. Um, and we can visualize, we can use this to create the plots we want later uh, down the line. So again, under differential expression, we're gonna add our samples object. Importantly spelled the same way again. So if we go back to structure study, you can see now we have under samples, uh, the data here. The features, for features, you guys are familiar, this is just row data. Um, so if you had a, a rain summarized experiment, if you save your row data out, it would work as uh, the features data in this package. Uh, importantly, go ahead. Oh, let me save it again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, importantly, the first column this is your relational column. So if we look at the head of features, this column is what the whole database is gonna pair all of these data sets across. And it has to be a character. So even though it's kind of a, an easy trip up if you're using entree IDs, that it's a numeric um, to go ahead and make that a character. Again, under our differential expression, we add the features and add that to our object. Oh, I didn't run the run. Meta features. So if we look at head, meta features. Looks like this is just more annotation with uh, of gene names. And we can add that as well. Okay. Assays. 
what is the nature of this assay log there? And so this is the actual um, raw data from our, our experiment. And so while we're not directly visualizing this, what's really nice is say there's a differential expression, you can click on this, the object in your window, and it'll take you back to the raw data to see uh, what the actual points are in that contrast. And so now we're just reading in the results of our differential expressions here. Uh, this is our top table saved out. So we can take a look at that. Um, and so you guys are familiar with this. Importantly here, uh, they probably went out of the way and named this first column entree, which would, you would have to manually do uh, so that it pairs with the rest of the database we're building. Uh, I have a question. Actually, where did you do the differential expression? In which step? It was done before. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just the table data uh, saved out. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I probably don't have enough RAM locally to do that. Okay, okay. So I just made a, a small data. No, just to be sure that I didn't miss something. No, no, no. We're just saving it. We're just visualizing pre-save stuff. Um, and so here, right, we have a nested list. So under our differential expression uh, model, we're saving three different contrasts, right? We're doing uh, basal versus uh, luminal progenitors, and then mature luminal versus basal, and then uh, progenitors versus mature in the last contrast. So we save this as a nested list and add that to our study. In this part, um, I think this part is actually optional, but it, it is nice to add out. So what you're doing really with tests is just going through and in all of the fields within your study, you're uh, annotating what the field actually is. And so when someone mouses over that, they get kind of a helper explanation in your visualizer that we'll see later. Um, so I have this road out here. Uh, it could say whatever, as long as again, these nested loops pair with what you named them previously. This is a really nice uh, function to add. And it does a really good job actually scraping these databases where when we have our top table in that visualizer, there's gonna be a link next to it or over it that pairs with NCBI or ensemble. And uh, the symbols will have uh, this informatics link where when you click on it, it'll take you to the page of that gene. Okay, so now we're, we're kind of at the important part. Um, and so I wanna go back, look at the structure of our study and see what we actually filled out. Uh, so we've done a lot here. Uh, we have a name, the description of our, of our study here. Um, we added all our samples and raw data. And so far, we don't have plots. Uh, we don't have any reports. We did add link outs. So that's what we're working on now. In the back end of this, when the app is running, this get plotting feature is querying your data or get plotting data. So what it's doing, um, shoot, I don't have the, the app running now. But say I picked a drop down window and I wanted a mat or a scatter plot of this gene. This runs and then it runs uh, whatever plot you've made over that data. So let's let's go ahead and take a look. No model, no assays available. 
I might have forgot to add the app. So X is a subset of our study that meets these requirements. So it's within differential expression. It is from this gene and it's from this contrast. And so what we can do with that interactively is we can start building plots. Um, it's really hard to build the plots if you're not uh, working on some sample data, right? So importantly, you guys are probably familiar with ggplot and plotly. Those work well with this app. But importantly, and it's confusing, you have to build your plots as a function of x. And that'll come important later. So here, we're just taking our sample so we can run this and see. Merging our samples table with our assays so that we get raw data with, with our what is it, the cell types annotated to it. And then we can just make a, a plot of uh, expression by cell type. That's all we're doing here in, in a typical ggplot. So we can look at that. Now, importantly, because we made this a function, we, this, isn't, this is going to be in our environment. Um, and we can add this into our study group and it doesn't matter what gene we put here. So let's say, now I'm struggling to remember any genes. Uh, let me get it into features. All right, let's take this one. So we could get new data. We don't have to run our ggplot again. And we get a new plot because we saved the function in the environment. All right, looking at this, we're gonna make a multi-feature plot. Really what multi-feature here means is multi-gene. And so we run our get plotting data. Int features here were subsetting the study just to one of the top tables and getting the first 10 genes. And so our plotting data will be a subset of the study that is those first 10 genes. You can see here. Hey Josh, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so what p-value is the plot showing there? That's a good question. Is that from one? Uh, that is the raw p-value. Um, from one of the differential expression analyses yeah. or? Yes, yes. Um, that's a good question. Why is it? Because like, yeah, it's the raw p-value because of, of line 140, right? Yeah. Line 140, you're extracting the p-value column. Yeah. Uh, from yeah. The, oh, and it's in the... This. And it's the basal versus LP. Yes. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. I missed that one. Thanks. Uh, and then we're going to go here and make a simple heat map. Um, again, in a function, and in this case, with multi feature plots, you should add in this line where if your assays are less than too long, it doesn't make sense to make a heat map, right? You can't make a heat map with one sample. Uh, so this is just a basic heat map looking at uh, clustered expression. And this is a histogram up here. It took me like a half hour to figure out what this is showing. Um, but really, this is just a, a key. And then they show you how many samples fall into each column. Uh, and we can see this is a nice heat map. Uh, and we've got like 10 more of these, but I think you're getting the point that uh, 
we can test features across uh, different genes. And so this is, what are they trying to show here? This is a, again, a multi, uh, multi uh, expression, multi contrast uh, plot is what they call this. And so we're looking at the T statistics for this gene across all of them. Uh, and so we can see it doesn't uh, perform well in this, in this contrast, but it is different than the basal cells. And I think here they're just showing again. Uh, this is a contrast not across samples, but across uh, a heat map across contrast, rather than last time we had samples here. So again, because we've linked that by entree ID and sample ID, we these are um, basically within the study, we have three interactive databases that can be queried right now. Gonna burn through here because these are kind of kind of redundant, but they they're nice to show in the environment. Um, this is a big plot. Okay, so we have a lot going on here. Um, I think it's like the last four plots we've looked at in one plot. But so we have samples on the bottom, uh, features clustered, and then we have. Uh, Pop, this is a plotly, notably not a ggplot. Um, and we have our groups here. Um, and it looks like we have a histogram within each group of the expression level. So that's super cool. We have a bar for p-value and it looks like they're all significant. Okay. There we go. And then this is just a nice single feature. If you were click, looked at a gene and you wanted to see it across a study where its expression was, uh, you can pop out this plot. I'm gonna just load these really quick. Okay, so now we have our, we're at the point where we've made all the plots we want to make that we would typically make in our R markdown or our report or for our presentation on differential expression data. And um, what we're going to do is make a list. And you have to have these plots loaded in your environment. So as, as a function in your environment. And then you're making a list here. So first we go within differential expression, which is the name of our, of our uh, model here within our study. And we go expression by cell type. That's the name of our first plot. Um, and some descriptions here for the display name, the description, uh, what is the kind of plot, and then any packages you used in making that plot. Uh, to fill out the last part of the feature. And so it's going to automatically load these uh, when you run and install the app. And so you do this for each plot. And these are now saved within your environment uh, for your app you're going to launch. These are just functions to test that your plot is actually working. Uh, we'll skip those for now. They had a R data object for gene annotations. Uh, so what are the functional groups of the genes and actually where, where do they cluster? And so we're going to load those in as well. And lastly, uh, we had enrichment data. So this is kind of a second kind of data. And we're adding, this will not go um, in the same pane as, what is it, the, the differential expression. 
So we're creating enrichment. Uh, basically, this is just a helper function to data cleanse. But I don't know that that's translatable because not everybody's data is going to be in the same format. Um, and so under differential expression, we've created this list under our, it looks like, yes, under our annotation, we've created this list of enriched um, gene sets that we're going to put with each contrast. We can add a link again, like we did with the genes to the, the GSEA enrichment analysis. I think this is just for a plot um, of the enrichment analysis. Okay. And then within that folder, we had an HTML saved and you can attach that to your app as well. Kind of ad hoc. Okay. Burning through here, I'm sorry. So lastly, once you have your study object, so if we go back to that uh, structure study, we have all of our stuff filled out now in here, uh, at least the, the mandated parts. Um, and now we can launch our app. So you do that with the start app. Um, and you can see it's running, it's actually interactively running here in the terminal, even though it's in my browser. Okay. Remember we named our study RNA-seq123. Our model is differential expression, and we can look at one of these contrasts. And if the rant from my computer is co-op. Actually, Josh, since it's like uh, you think some, so does this like uh, Shiny needs like lots of computing resources, like RAM and? Uh... Uh, it's, it's Java in the background. Uh, I don't think it's doing anything computational. It's just um, it's just launching the study, like the the actual graphs. Okay, so this is our default plot. Uh, anytime you load something as an analysis, uh, where you have a log fold change, it will make you a volcano plot for each of these. Should have done this. We'll see if it works. Okay. Really nicely, uh, you can click and drag. And now the table actually will subset to what you're looking at. For whatever reason, the single feature plots have not worked well here. Um, so we're going to look for multi feature for now. Let's go ahead and select the top five and see if we can get this graph to actually load. Um, I, I did get it working on mine, uh, my laptop, to the single feature. I just had to click on the actual. Uh, uh, on the link? Yeah, yeah, on the view plus for feature. How did you do it, Leo? I'm oh, sorry. Um, I'll just screen share. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, oh, it, it just wasn't loading for me. I should have been saying. Yeah, so here we go back to the table. I had only one selected. I click on view plots for a feature. Um, and then it's just open to. Um, 
Uh, okay. Do we? Do you mind if we work through yours? Since you. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Okay. Uh, if you want to check, like, uh, maybe top five of those, we can look at the multi feature. Um. Yeah. Go to the next screen over. Uh, it should. Give you a heat map. There he goes. There's still a heat map. Yeah, I don't know why it's sized that way. But yeah, you might want to. There you go. Um, and so if you click that drop down at the top, it should give you. So those are all the graphs we made. Um, and so you have. So we we made all five of them, yeah. right? All, all plots. Um, and then um, if you click up top, we can look at our uh, the enrichment analysis. So this is just going to be like your generic uh, GSEA output, um, and the the back end here uh, creates kind of a graph. Did yeah, I click anywhere? Uh, yeah. The how do I describe it? Next to the table icon up top. There you go. Uh, and so that's going to visualize these as, uh, how do I say, uh, across them, the, the pie chart is like how many of the genes are in each contrast, and then the color is how significant they are. Um, I'm curious what it pulls up if you click on it. Ah, and that's our barcode graph. Where, Oops. Has anybody worked with one of these barcode graphs before? Because I'm not even sure how to do this. No effect. The one on the top, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, small uh, effects. Uh, I guess just showing the, the um, a bar plot of the T statistics. Uh, so be like, okay, which is the gene right here? Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Gene 13, 8 to 2 is the highest there. We have all the um, single feature plus there. Gotcha. Okay. Very cool. Um, so I think that's the gist of it. All uh, right. So right now it's mostly uh, portable with expression data or, or count data in general. Uh, I think they're trying to make this more modular with a uh, single cell, uh, but I don't know that that's happened yet. These are all the link counts you were talking about. Yeah. Um, can we sort things? I think you can filter. If you click on just the column, what happens? Oh, I yeah. Um, do you know if, uh, the entrees that we're listing for, for example, basal versus LP, mm -hmm. if all of those have to be the same on they genes. Don't. They don't. Um, and even, so like I did, uh, when I did this, we had RNA data and protein data. Um, and so 
protein data is fairly like you get like 1500 genes or 1500 proteins um, and then they might map to mul or multiple proteins might map to the same gene it'll still pair so um, if you did a, a plot across it it'll it'll be relational and pull all the proteins for that gene It is pretty cool. Like, can you just you can just go to the volcano plot and click on the gene. Yeah, that part's nice. And it also uses hexes when there's too many genes there. Mm -hmm. and then, so this is multiple features. Also, see here you can change it and display symbols instead of entree. Mm -hmm. Like if you know your gene symbols. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. That's very nice. That's... Is it volcano plot? No. No. Oh, okay. It's just you can choose what when you want on the axis. Oh. The volcano plot is like full change against P body. Mm -hmm. That was the uh, sorry. Um, I guess I lost the minus log 10 p value. <laughs> right, because now it's just plotting a uh, regular p value. Yeah, it should be adjusted, right? No, I guess uh, I messed it up. Oh, here, minus log 10 transformation. I didn't okay. see that, but it once you mouse over, it says, like, what do you want to do? Yeah, okay, <laughs> that makes sense. So that, that, that was a regular volcano. Log full change minus log 10 p value. Um, against minus log of um, by default on trace singles. What's the other checkbox there? Uh, for the other variable, for the other axis. Oh, uh, right, and it takes you the, uh, I don't know, let's say you want to do, I just put p-value against p-value <laughs> on the minus log oh, 10 okay. skills. You can just log 10. Yeah. Um, what is B? B is from Lima. From Lima. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, um, let's see, a symbol. Oh, you can search by symbol too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, yeah, and the and the graph on the left also updates and if you're searching it grays out uh what's not selected what what you're not um showing yeah. on what's not yeah. displayed on the table. Where did it format it allows? Uh it allows you to export in the S SVG or PNG. Oh, okay, it's just okay because of the tables has other export formats here. In the, yeah, the in, the, in the in the down part. Oh, here? Yeah, uh, the exterior. Yes. Um, what is this set analysis? Um, oh, you can do this. So it's like a filtering where you can select genes that are like significant and, you know, all of your criteria. That our plot. Um, I don't know how to get intersections to work. Um, I think you have to press filter first. Maybe not. No, now we can see the intersections. Okay. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool.
Um, I didn't really understand his pies. Yeah, I'm looking it's at a, it's, a, it's a different um, it's a different test each pie. I see. Yeah, each kind of third is a different uh, contrast. I don't think the size of the pie means anything. I think it's just the color is uh, related to the significance. I'll stop sharing so you can you can go back to it. Um, yeah, I think that's all I had for you guys. Um, so yeah, unless you guys had any questions. Can you set the uh the pie charts to for the slices to um be different sizes to like represent something? Yeah, so just like we did, um, we kind of only loaded in one chart for the enrichment analysis. I don't really use charts like that for, for GSCA, right? It's typically the the dot plot, right? Where it's like how significant it was, how many genes, if you can imagine, uh, is kind of a typical um, typical plot. You can load all those in. Anything you would put in a report, you can put in that second panel, again, by adding plots to that enrichment analysis. You didn't see the report, actually. Is that the report, the, the HTML file that you loaded? That's a good question. I actually don't know how to view the report in here. Uh, it was a function or from here? Um, we, we, we gave it a... An, um, HTML. Uh, we gave it an HTML file. Oh, okay. okay. Um, I guess um, a question I have for you, Josh, is like all those plotting, uh, all that plotting code. Is there like a um, some type of database of like plotting uh, code that you guys are built or or that Abby built that is external, or is that all yeah, internal? Maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Uh, within that, the original um, repo, uh, not this one, but the actual um, omics navigator repo, uh, there should be examples, I believe, in the vignettes. Okay. So there should be, I hope they didn't just make that part internal. I mean, the vignettes are in, um, in sweet format. Yeah. So it would take a while to, to read it. But, yeah. Um, but no, I definitely, I hadn't used it in a while, but I definitely remember they just had almost like a sandbox script of, of just plots um that you might want to make um that you could just copy and paste in rather than trying to have to reinvent the wheel um and you know if, if this can be deployed as a shiny app on shiny apps.io i'm not sure uh, for the interactive like uh, scatter plots with like the volcano plot, for example. If you want to do like a uh, log full change versus log full change of two different DE tests, can you do that on this? Um, like two different cell types, for example, in the DE test result. Not in this window. You okay. could make your own plot over here, uh, over in the single features or the multimodal features. Mm -hmm. um, you can do it across studies and across plot, across uh, models and tests, um, but you would have to make your own plot. 
it won't be in the default window. The uh, previous question was about the, the Shiny app. This is actually not a Shiny app uh, technology. Yeah. It uses uh, open CPU, very interesting. I looked into it a bit and it's like an alternative to have your own, uh, it's based on a JavaScript library that you can uh, run an interface with Java, with the R very well. It's a, it's a great discovery. I didn't know it's it's very flexible also in terms of interface. You see the the UI doesn't look like a shiny app at all. Um, have more control on the JavaScript side. It's really cool. Okay, thank you very much, Josh, and thank congratulations you. again on your new job. Uh, thank you, thank you, and uh, yeah, it's good seeing everybody again. Good to see you too. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.